Hey everyone, and welcome to this month's quick tip tutorial. I've got a really good one for you today. It's all about linked data. What does it mean? What's the difference between Shift D and Alt D? And uh, you know uh, what happens when you use one of these operations or the other one? All this and more as soon as we jump into Blender. So why don't we go ahead and get started? <laughs> So we've got this very basic scene for you and you can download this scene uh, in the show notes below this video. There's just a link there that takes you to a free Patreon uh, post and you'll find the file there. We've got this basic kind of stone floor and we've got this worn out looking pillar. Now I am in cycle so everything's looking really really pretty but just so we can uh, illustrate this uh, new method we're going to bump this down to viewport shading and uh, right mouse um, drag to just sort of get out a camera view and then right scroll to zoom in, holding down shift whenever I'm right mouse clicking to move that viewport around. So this column one octagonal object, if we just select that and go shift D, I'm gonna hit X to constrain and I'm gonna hold control and maybe shift so I can just get this over 1.5. Uh, units over. Okay, so now I've got this duplicate object. It's column one octagonal. Now, if we take a look at things like the materials, you can see that they do indeed share material information. Nothing there has changed. If we go into tab edit mode, uh, you can see that you can edit this one separately. If we tab out, select this one, tab in separately to this one. Now, if we select that original one, and this time we go alt D and let's go X to constrain on the X axis, control, uh, shift, and let's move this over 1.5 units this way. Now, if I select either of these and go tab into edit mode, you can now see that all the vertices show up. This is because Alt D does a linked copy. It is sharing object data, material data, all the data that has to do with this one also has to do with this one. For example, if we're just going to front view here, let's select the Shift D version and go into, oh, we're just going to wireframe, edit mode, tab, and I'm just going to um, box select these, I'm gonna grab in the Z direction and move these uh, down a little bit. You can see that that obviously is editable separately to these ones. But if I edit either of these, tab into edit mode, click on one of those vertices, box select, grab and move these up a little bit, you can see that both get edited, all right? What is the point of this? Well, let's say for instance, that we wanted to populate this um, room with all of these objects and we got to the point where we liked where they were positioned, um, but we wanted them to look a little bit different. Maybe they're too short, maybe they're too long. If you shift deed everything, that means you would have to edit each individual uh, item. Oh, why not array it? Well, maybe you don't want them to be placed or rotated in any particular order. So let's just go into top view here. We'll just go into wireframe so we can see. Uh, I'll delete these two duplicates. Let's move this one over to this point over here. And I'm gonna go Alt D and holding down control, I'm gonna move this all the way over to this side here. Now I'm gonna go Alt D again, and I'm gonna move it down here, but I'm just gonna rotate it slightly, okay? Maybe this is a little off kilter, okay? So you can't really do this with an array. But because I've alt deed everything, now what I can do is I can tab into edit mode. I can grab those vertices, which still happen to be selected, and by moving them up or down, all of the duplicates change. Now, what if you like this one and you want to change this separately to the others? Well, all you have to do is break that object connection. Now, I'll show you where that is in the object menu just to make things easy and clear. Object relations make single user. Now look at the choices that you have. You can just make the object and data. Well, then this becomes its own object and we can scale it and so on and so forth, but it shares the same material. Well, what if we went ahead and did object relations, 
objects, data, and materials. Well, now you'll see over here in the materials box, we've now got this new material called column one. Now, it just so happens that I created a second material. So I'm just gonna switch it over to that one. And just so that we can see the settings here, under viewport display, uh, let's make this a little bit more of a, a goldeny brown so that we understand that this is sort of something different now, okay? So now this uh, has been unlinked from these and we've given it a new material. Now that duplicate material has got a little zero on it. So that means we can come over here to file, clean up and just go purge all and it will purge any other information including that duplicate material. So we can on the fly clean our file up. Now there is another advantage to linking data. You can do this in the opposite direction as well. Let's say we delete this, this one, we delete this column and uh, let's just add a basic cube, okay? Uh, and I'm just gonna make this quite small, uh, 0.5, and uh, let's just go into edit mode and let's just bring that up so it sits on the floor, but our pivot point is central, okay? The pivot becomes important. You can see that the pivot for this column is here. Now let's, for argument's sake, say we want to place this cube wherever we need a column. Let's put a cube there and we can Alt D or Shift D for this, but it doesn't really matter for what I'm about to do. So I'm just gonna go Alt D because we're, we're used to it now. And we're going to place this cube at regular intervals on this floor. Now, if we take one of these cubes, we select it, we shift select the column and we go Control L. If we click on object data, bingo, the cube has now been transformed into a column. It still retains its cube seven name, but it now links the same object data as this one. So why don't we do it for all the rest? Click. Shift click, shift click, shift click, shift click, shift click, shift click, and shift click that column at the end. Control L, object data, bingo. All the cubes have now been turned into columns because we have linked the object data from those columns to that original column. I hope this demystifies a little bit um, the whole idea of linked data. As you saw, there were a lot of options in there other things you can link and break links to and uh, duplicate and so on. So as always, if you found this uh, tutorial useful, uh, why not subscribe to my YouTube channel? And if you're feeling at all generous, jump over to my Patreon page and join my legions of Patreon supporters there. It's the support I get over at Patreon that makes the production of these videos possible. Thanks for watching everyone, bye for now. <laughs>